Hey everybody, I'm meteorologist Gavin Sandell. Now I'm just 22 years old, though growing up, I've always thought that northern lights were one of the rarest spectacles in our neck of the woods. Safe to say though, that's really changed over the last year or two, and that's because we've had some really spectacular shows. Throw back to May of last year, we had our strongest solar storm in over 20 years, a G5, which is the highest classification up on that list, and it caused just an amazing show of northern lights in our area. Just a few months later, too, in October, we had a show not as great, but still a spectacular show of lights. And just these two events in less than a year's time shows that this is a big change from what has happened in the years past, because we haven't really had a lot of activity uh, since the early 2000s. So to figure out why that is, let's go into the origin of this and talk about the sun. And you could see uh, when you're looking at the sun with sunglasses or maybe with the naked eye, which uh, you really shouldn't do, there's a lot of glare, but take that glare away and you could see there's a little bit of uh, discolorations or some spots in the sun. We call these sunspots and these are dark spots that can last from anywhere from a few hours to a few months. And they're changes in the sun's temperature and it has to do with the magnetic field of the sun as well. And if there's enough sunspots, it can actually uh, cause what's called uh, some solar storms. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Also note that these are part of a, what's called a solar cycle, which we'll mention in just a little bit as well. But first, I want to mention how auroras form in the first place. We have what's called corneal mass ejections from the sun, and that's when sunspots uh, end up uh, messing up the magnetic field of the sun to a point where you actually have like a plasma-like mass ejecting from the sun, going from one outer atmosphere to another. And if it actually ends up going into space, it can interact with Earth's magnetic field. And you see how uh, this uh, area towards the poles, there's a little bit of weakness. When you have these, uh, oh, excuse me, coronal mass ejections, these particles can enter the Earth's atmosphere where they're at this weakest towards the poles. So that's how we get our auroras in our area. So these cycles uh, go over an 11 year time frame. We're currently actually in the midst of a maximum of one right now at the end of 2025. We had our last maximum in the uh, early 2010s. And the di there's a difference between these twos uh, at this moment. And you could see what's predicted is much less than what was observed. We had a pretty underwhelming solar cycle last time. Uh, our maximum was at uh, a little bit less than what it should have been. But compared to this one, the predicted one is a little bit less than what we've actually seen. There's been much more activity. And these two most recent uh, spectacles that I was talking about in May and October, those actually uh, outperformed anything that we saw in solar cycle 24. So it's a combination of just the sheer amazingness of uh, overperforming in this one compared to what we've seen in the last one as well. For Weather 101, I'm Gavin Sandell.